Hey everybody and welcome to this CGMA course about what seems to be a big and popular topic in character creation and modeling that are hard surfaces. They come in many different facets, they come in many different styles and are a very a very broad subject. Uh, but, but before we get to it, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is uh, Ben Yet, and I'm currently working as a senior 3D artist at Blizzard. Before that, I worked at Guerrilla Games as a character artist on Kills on Shadowfall and later on Horizon Zero Dawn. So there's this, there's this proverb that says clothes make people. And I, I kind of think this applies to hard surfaces as well because what we do with hard surfaces and characters, we dress the characters with hard surfaces. For instance, when we design armor and model the armor, onto them, right? So they have to fulfill some kind of a purpose, a bit of a function. What we can do with the armor design and the model is we can tell a story. We can tell more about the character. Who is he? You know, what is he doing? What's his job? What has he experienced? What kind of story can he tell? So let's say we have this vicious looking creature wearing some battle armor. And when we look at it and we see, okay, this armor is just clean, no scratches, no dirt, nothing. And we think, okay, this guy either has never been in combat or he's about to go. And if we take the same guy, the same character, the same armor, and just beat the armor up at scratches, at cracks, and chipped away paint, and burn marks, and what else, bullet holes even, and dents and everything, like really ruin it and put the guy next to him, well, then he tells a different story. So when we look at them both, we can say, okay, the guy who is just about to go, he will experience something really bad. So he does know what, what awaits him, or does he? And the other guy maybe just came back from combat saying, dude, this is going to be tough. So the hard surfaces we put on characters such as armor, they are an opportunity to tell more about the character's story, you know, what his, what his job is, where does he come from? Uh, for instance, if he's an alien from a different planet and he visits planet Earth, maybe he's not able to breathe the atmosphere that we do, so he needs a breathing apparatus that changes the oxygen into something else to you know, help, help him survive. And this apparatus could be part of the hard surface parts that, he's, that he wears. It could be embedded into his armor. This could help us designing the armor plating he, he, he wears. And we had this... A similar thing when we were working on the characters on, on Horizon Zero Dawn because they had to look like they they came from the robots from from the machines the tribes hunt but sometimes were more some some of the tribes were less sophisticated as the other so the Nora tribe for instance where Aloy is from they didn't know how to work with the material from the robots they couldn't cut them or drill holes in it they had to use the screw holes and put a rope through it and attach it somewhere on, on their body. And we in the character team and the, the character concept artists, they had to make sure we, de we design and, and model the hard surface parts and, uh, that way and put them on the characters. Uh, and other tribes, they wear the hard surface pieces from the machines in a different way. So the hard surface parts were also a way for the designers to tell the tribes apart. So there's a lot more than just you know throwing shapes at a character just to come up with some type of, of hard surface armor. I mean, it might look cool, but when we think about a bit of background story, a bit of the purpose, and, and the personality that it could add to the character, it can help us get it more creative when we design the armor and build it. But design is, is just one thing. Once we start to translate it from 2D to 3D, we have to make sure the armor works and the hot surface part works for animation later on because it's the, the, the design part and the modeling part or the high poly part is, a, is just one section of the character pipeline. There is more to come, especially for when we build a character for games and he has to move. So throughout this course, I'd like to focus on techniques which should help you to understand how to translate those hard surfaces from 2D to 3D. So that can be used in a production pipeline, such as games, for instance, you know, real-time rendering. But we're not only going to look at how to accomplish that. I also like to assist you in somehow getting rid of a bit of maybe a bit of the intimidation or fear 
when approaching hard surface design and modeling to help you grow your creativity. You know, when it comes to making your own hard surface designs and models for your characters or your creatures and and therefore your own portfolio projects. So this is where we add the story component again. So while we are building the 3D armor um, of the character throughout this course, I'd like to show you my personal thought process of hard surfaces for characters, which will hopefully answer a lot of your questions and give you a solid foundation to take away and to grow on once we go our separate ways after the course. So it's a lot to cover and going to be quite some work, but it'll be fun and i like to help you as good as I can to achieve those goals. When working in a studio or for a client, there are some there are always other people down the character pipeline who will need to work with what you deliver. So these departments are rigging, they can be animation, surfacing, texturing, scene assembly, and so on. So if someone wants to work in the industry as a character artist, it's pretty much a standard point to know that a model or character does not end inside of ZBrush or Keyshot. And it needs to be textured, it will move and be optimized for the target renderer. And at the end, it's all a team effort, right? You're always working within a team. And seeing the character or creature being set free by an animator, it's actually, it's one of the most rewarding moments in the pipeline as animation adds so much more to a character. But with motion, there come certain technical requirements to the design and the later model, which we're going to take a look at throughout this course. So let's go briefly over um, each week of the next six weeks. <laughs> So in week one, we will take a look at some basic design principles and challenges when it comes to hard surface for characters. You know, and then we take a given character concept, we take a look at it, we talk about the character's background story, the references used, so we prepare and break down the concept for the modeling stage. In week two, we start to do quickly sketch in the clothing and focus on laying down the basic shapes of the hard surface parts inside of ZBrush. And we also do some hard surface design along the way. And I'll talk about my own thought process, some design decisions, and the entire tool set I used. In week three, uh, this week will be mostly about testing the 3D concept of our character if he can still move with all the hard surface armor put on. So we're going to create a very basic, quick rig inside of Maya, and we're going to elaborate and apply any changes necessary you know, to provide the range of motion the character actually needs. Right? If we figure out that the armor we put on this character is going to block or limit his movement and his motion range, then we need to change that. In week four, we are going to detail and clean up our 3D concept. We bring it to a point where it's ready for later remodeling and we topo. In week five, this one will be about exporting uh, the hybrid sculpt into another 3D package. And we're going to take a look at techniques of remodeling it for sub-D, which is one way of remodeling a 3D concept that, for instance, comes out of ZBrush. And another way is to remodel it, not for sub-D, but for real-time rendering, like low-res topology. And this is what's going to happen in the last week, week six, where we take a look at Retopo for final retime rendering, and that includes guidelines for topology. We look at edge flow. We talk about polygon budget, and some technical requirements to the geo. The next six weeks ahead are going to be a lot of work, but also a lot of fun. And I'm really looking forward to working with you guys. So let's get started. <laughs>